All right, this is FatMush21, question 3. If you're watching this and you have yet to try the FatMush21 paper, paper 4.2, and you're about to see for your exam, please use paper 4.2 as a bonus to test out whether you're exam ready, if it's like really close to your exam. Then come back and watch the recording. Spoiler alert. Okay, 3A. Okay, confession time. When I saw this question, I just want to stop doing it <laughs> because use kinetic model of matter, describe the structure of a solid. Okay, so when it comes to this kind of explaining question, um, I am going to write something longer than what I expect CIE to give the mark scheme because I, I don't always know where their marks are because they are not always, they don't, they don't always award marks consistently at the same key points. If you do enough past year question, you will agree with me. So if we're talking about solid, you know the solid they arrange in some lattice structure one, normally in chemistry or if you do chemistry, you draw like this, you know, this is your NACL, your table sort, you know. So they are stuck in some lattice structure. So I would say that the particles in a solid are... I will use the word I tend to see, uh, closely pack. Closely pack in a lattice structure, right? We call this a lattice structure and it vibrates in place, right? Because they are stuck inside the lattice structure, ma. okay? So the idea of lattice structure is a uniform structure that does not change so if let's say you are this purple particle you are stuck here la bro you can vibrate a bit la you vibrate a bit you shake a bit but you're stuck there <laughs> it's like you in exam hall when you sit for an exam you are in a lattice structure you may vibrate in your chair if it doesn't make too much noise but that's it <laughs> you may not translate you may not move around i also want to say because this is a simple kinetic model i'm going to comment a bit about the bonding so i will say they have the strongest intermolecular forces. Compared to liquid or solid. So I am guessing, let's appeal for leniency first. If you say closely pack in a lattice structure, you get one mark, B1. And then you vibrate in place, you get B1. So this is linear, more linear mark scheme. If they really want to make things a bit difficult, they will expect this whole thing will be B1 and then this one is B1. You talk about the intermolecular bonds. So when it comes to simple kinetic model, right? When you want to describe, talk about this. What is the structure, right? What is the movement of the particle? And what is the bond? And then you can relate to potential energy. Movement, you can relate to kinetic energy. So for example, if it's gas, simple kinetic model, I will say gas will, there's no structure. So the gas move randomly in a zigzag pattern, colliding with each other and the walls of the container. For ideal gas, we assume there's no bonds. For liquid, uh, there's no structure. The water particle will move freely about each other, but they are still significant intermolecular forces. All right. Part B, specific latent heat of vaporization is much greater. Okay, hang on. Heat of vaporization, a lot more bigger than latent heat of fusion for the same substance. Explain this in terms of spacing of molecules. This is very, very specific. They only want you to talk about spacing. They don't really care about bonds. So if you talk about bonds, you probably won't get marked. And this is just one mark, okay? So I will say, when you talk about vaporization, let's say this is LV, not the back but latent heat of vaporization, you are bringing liquid. Liquid are kind of still close together and then you are changing it to gas where it is far, far apart. Okay, whereas latent heat of fusion, LF, it is, you are in a lattice structure, maybe something like this, and you are changing it to something less structure, but it is still closely packed. 
So what I will say is during melting, the increase in molecular spacing. So here is melt. Okay, increase in molecular spacing is much less or just less than during boiling. Okay, because here is boil. So when you change something from solid to liquid, you are just tearing apart the lattice structure, but the atoms are still close together. But if you want to vaporize or change it to gas, you need to tear the atoms apart. All right, that's... Uh, so I, I, I'm thinking the mark would be the molecular spacing is less than boiling during melting. Or you talk about state change. Like, and if you feel, I think this is okay for one mark. <coughs> but if you want to make it better, you can say during melting, the energy required which is the heat of vaporization, melting, no, heat of fusion to increase molecular spacing is less than the energy required the vaporization to increase molecular spacing during boiling. But this blue line should be enough, okay? Because it's just one mark. If it's a two mark thing, I will relate to the fact that during melting, you need energy. And I know this because later they were going to show you some melting boiling curve. Now this curve long time never see before. If you look at recent past years, they tend to not draw this curve uh, or they don't draw two state change. So first thing when I see a graph like this, right? Okay, it says here, a heater supplies energy at a constant rate to this much substances. Variation with time t of the temperature is shown. Substance is perfectly insulated from the surrounding. Good news! You don't have to find heat loss or heat gain from surrounding. Yay! So if there's no heat loss or heat gain, then... There is no simultaneous equation. How does the simultaneous equation question look like? Go check out the playlist. You can find one. All right. So here, how do we know what is going on? I pretend I am the substance. Hello, my name is substance. I started my life journey at t equal to zero minute. And I am a cool, cool negative 120 degrees Celsius. And then when you heat up, do you know why there's a flat line here? why the temperature don't increase immediately. If you think because here got state change, ah, no lah. Dude, you, let's say you boil or you melt something. Oh. Let's say ice, ah, you put on fire. You put fire on ice, immediately the fire melt. Ah. I mean the ice melt. melt. No lah. You need time. So this entire, this beginning flat line here, not to be confused with state change, this is when the heat source or the heater and the substance, whatever we are heating, achieve thermal equilibrium. It takes a while for heat to transfer. If you cook Maggi Me middle of the night because you study until 3 a.m., you cook your instant noodle, your ramen, you boil water, the water doesn't instantly heat up when you turn on the fire. You turn on the fire, you can put your hand inside the water. It's still cold. It takes a while, okay, to achieve thermal equilibrium. So this point is time taken. So this part we don't count. So I'm negative 120. I'm just chilling. Somebody turn on a heat source. Okay. It takes a while for us to achieve some form of thermal equilibrium between the heat source and the surface of the substance. Okay. So if let's say I think about the heat source and then I stick it inside the solid like this. Let's say the, heat, the thermal equilibrium will be achieved at this layer only. The, it takes a while for the vibration of the particles of the heater to transfer to the substance. All right. So this one is the thermal equilibrium. Temperature increase, increase, increase until this point. Then it flatline again. Why flatline here? Because the substance begin to melt. Here is melting. And then we continue the journey. My temperature increase, 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 increase until this time. 
where for a long, long time, my temperature didn't change. And why is that? Because here is boiling, which makes sense, right? We need more time to boil something because we need more energy to change something from liquid to gas, which is what they were asking in the initial part of the question. So let us carry on. We already understand the graph. Determine the temperature where the substance melts. Negative 100, low. Okay, yay. Free mark. If you go and put negative 120, then it's just sad. It's okay. You are learning. This is not your paper yet. Power of the heater is 150 watt. This is P. Use the graph and calculate in kilojoule per kg the specific latent heat of vaporization of the substance. If we are seeking specific latent heat of vaporization, you need to find the boiling state. Where is it boiling? Boil. Oh, you boil from here to here. Okay, I need to know how long it took for this thing to boil. So as usual, we dot, 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 dot. So you start boiling at three minutes and you stop boiling at 8.5 minutes. So three to 8.5. So the time taken here is actually 8.5 minus three, which is 5.5 minutes. Okay. So I will just put here. Lah. It takes 5.5 minutes. Time taken for the substance to boil. Will be 8.5 minus 3, which is 5.5 minute. Okay. And then I can use Q is equal to ML. Thank goodness no heat loss to surrounding. If not, we will have to say heater heat the substance and then heater loss to surrounding. But this one is my favorite number, zero. Okay, so Q is equal to PT. So PT is equal to ML. Okay, so what is power? 150. How long did it take to melt? 5.5 minutes. Please remember to convert to second because this is what is already SI. We know the mass 0.045 L. Okay, M is here, there. So if I press my calculator, I will get my L as 1.1 times 10 to the power of 6 joule per kg. But this to be kilojoule per kg. Yeah, so ma fun. Okay, 1.1 times 10 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 3 joule per kg. I am doing this step for those of us who always make mistake when we convert prefixes. 3 plus 3 is 6. Hopefully that is clear enough. So this one gets to stay 1.1 times 10 to the power of 3 and this thing becomes kilo joule per kg. Okay, so 1.1 times 10 to the power of 3. Okay, let's see where are the marks. I think if you write PT is ML, you should get C1 mark. As usual, they can make it a little bit harder for you and put the mark in substitution. Okay, and then I think if you remember, you substitute everything correctly, you will get another C1. And then your final answer, including the right prefix 10 to the power of 3 is A1. So if you've forgotten to convert, then you lose one mark law. Okay. All right, last part. Suggest what can be deduced from the fact that Q is less steep than P. Okay, okay, let's see. If Q is less steep than P, all right, so what does the steepness tell you? The steepness, the gradient, right? Okay, so if I want to find gradient for this line, I'm looking at the change in temperature. For example, oh, this is the change in temperature, negative 100 to 60. So a change in temperature is actually 100 plus 60, like 100, oh, 160. This is for P, uh, 160 over 2 minutes. So my change in temperature is 80 degrees Celsius per minute. Wow, this is a very fast heater. Okay, what about Q? For Q, my gradient is equal to, so I, I don't have a lot of Q, but I can do, I guess, 8.5 to 9.5, one minute. 
So one minute or oh, my increase in temperature is 60 to 9.5 here. This one looks like 82.4. So this is 84 and this is 60. So the gradient here would be uh, 84 minus 60, 24 over 1 minute. So I'm taking the change in temperature. Okay, this is delta theta, this is T. So this is 24 degrees Celsius per minute. What can we say between P and Q? P is steeper, 80. Q is less steep, 24. But what I'm also saying is that for the same heater, it takes a longer time to heat up Q because Q is gas and gas is a very good insulator. It's harder to heat up your gas, right? So if it's harder to heat up your gas, this is what you can see, Q or the state Q or the specific heat capacity. One mark. So I'll say specific heat capacity for the gaseous gauge. I never know how to pronounce this word. Gaseous state of the substance is greater than liquid state. I refer to specific heat capacity because Q is MC delta theta. So I need more heat because now this one is constant. This is constant. So the only difference is this and this. If the delta theta is big, then the C is small. Right? So if the change in temperature is very big, like 80 degrees Celsius per minute, it means that the specific heat capacity of liquid is smaller. That's why gaseous is greater than liquid. Or I would say that it, more energy or more heat is required to increase the temperature. But I don't know whether this one will get marked. Temperature of Q by 1 degree Celsius compared to P. Okay? I hope they were accept both, but comments about specific heat capacity is more legit because it shows that you understand this equation. Okay, so I repeat again uh, for P, which is the initial part, the gradient G is equal to 80 degrees Celsius per minute. For Q, the gradient G is 24 degrees Celsius per minute. Okay, so this means if my change in temperature is bigger for every single minute, because for every single minute, the heat is constant. So this one is constant. This is constant. For the same amount of time, the same heater. So if delta theta for this one, the change in temperature increase, so this means the specific heat capacity is less. So, or more heat is required Okay, whereas for this one, delta T decrease, specific heat capacity is more. This one, more heat is required. This one, less heat. Gas, ma, gas is a good insulator. So I think you use specific heat capacity is more legit. La. So this is B1. Maybe this is also accepted. We need more heat because we need to heat it a longer time. Okay, all right. So that's it for question three. This question got two thermal ideal gas and temperature question, which is pretty rare, but that's it for this question.